hey guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video we are going to see a new data analyst portfolio project and the name of the project is bank loan report and the domain which we have chosen in this uh, project is a financial domain or we can say a bank domain and this is the most used domain in real-time industries also most of the data analyst uh, developer works on this particular projects only and these projects are very much important because these are i can say very much uh, critical or i can say they are tricky and they are a bit advanced so in this project we are going to see each and every step how to build this particular dashboard and we will see or you will be able to you know learn everything from basic to advanced and after completing this project you will be in the position that you have learned so many functionalities and you will be able to answer so many or we can say variety of interview questions as well as you will be in the position to work in real-time industry also so in front of you you can see this will be our final product so this is the first dashboard so we have seen total three dashboard or we will be seeing total three dashboard in this complete project and we will see everything step by step in every tool and in all the data analyst portfolio tools also okay so first you can see this is a bank loan report which is we can say a summary of the report and this or this we can see this particular dashboard is more towards kpi dashboard we can see most of or we can say we are uh, you know showing different measures with respect to whatever we have in our data and we are giving an overall idea of to our business or to our bank client whichever we are building this project to and you can see this we have operated by using some filters over here and there are different kpis we can say these are the header kpis or we can say the main kpis and then we have distributed our loan with good loan and the bank loan we will see everything and with respect to that we have shown some kpis then there are some indicators also over here which are totally dynamic again and then we have shown a small grade view with respect to what are the loan status currently and how are the numbers working with respect to that okay so if you see for different purpose so if i see for bad loan and good loan also you can see and if you see for grade so for different grade grade if you want to see for grade a if you want to see for grade b if you want to see for grade c with respect to that we can see the values are changing and we can you know slice and dice the data with respect to these filters if you want to see for different states also if you want to see for alaska we can see for alaska if you want to see for california how the figures are how the customer behavior are there and how the bank is performing or how the loans are distributed in that particular state we can see with respect to that so not only these filters you can add a number of filters over here so for me i have added only these particular filters and with respect to that we will be also uh, you can see there are some navigation buttons over here so right now we are on a summary dashboard so when i click on this overview button so it will take me to our second uh, dashboard that is a bank loan report overview in which we will deep dive in the data we will see how the data is looking at granular level or at we can say at the deeper level and we will generate some insights from there so with respect to that the header kpis will remain constant and we have analyzed different charts with respect to our problem statement which i will be discussing in some time so we can see we have a line chart or area chart with respect to which we have total loan application then by state then by we have by term by employee length by purpose and by home ownership so before moving ahead in the video i would like to discuss about the data science and why you should get started with the data science right now so there are plenty of opportunities available right now in the data science field and there are not many skilled professionals who are available to fill this vacant role so according to the survey taken by 2026 the data science industry is expected to generate 11.5 million jobs across the globe so this is the great opportunity for your career growth and not only it professionals but a non it professional can also apply for this data science field be it a career change or a career launch or a career growth data science have a diverse opportunity for all the aspirants so what matters right now in the industry is the correct and relevant skills and hands-on experience and not all the conventional degrees whatever you have so if you want to learn data science live and hands-on odin school is here for you with their data science bootcamp so from here you can book a demo and to book a demo i will add the link in the description box of this particular video from where you can click and book a demo with odin school so now let's see who can join this particular demo for anyone who is trying to create a, a successful career in the data science or a fresher who is trying to launch his career in the data science 
or an experienced professional who is trying to upgrade the demand or in demand skills right now available in the market or a job seeker who is trying to make a comeback after a long career gap okay there are several career opportunities shaping the future of data science so this role has a demand for people having variety of skill sets so i will give you an example if you have a strong aptitude for coding and programming you can become an ml engineer or a data engineer you can also build administrative databases and work on different ai technologies as well if mathematics and statistics are your strength and you can manage to do some programming you can start off your career as a junior data scientist or data modeler if you are from a non tech background you can start your career with some basic technologies like data analyst or data visualizations so here are few students who have taken the course with odin school and have already been placed in the industry so if you also want to launch upgrade and change your career like this odin grads you can go and book your demo now so the link is available in the description of this video you will be also working with multiple exciting projects like covid-19 prediction credit card approvals health insurance predictions and many more and also you will be provided with industry interaction and placement support which will help you a rewarding career in data science with odin school so attend the demo to get the feel of the boot camp if you don't want to miss the opportunity to get placed with their 500 plus hiring partners which includes the companies like google sencher deloitte and etc you will also get the job assistance up to 2 years with no limit on the interviews you attend So now let's see how you can apply for this Odin School's Data Science Boot Camp. So first you have to schedule a demo class according to your preferred time slot. Second, get real time experience of that particular boot camp. And third, clarify your doubt with the counselor during the demo class itself. Then you have to enroll for that boot camp and start your data science journey. So no matter how many questions you have, you can get all the answers in the data science demo. you will get to interact with the counselors and get them cleared in the demo itself so go and book your slot now so let's move ahead with our video so here you can see uh, we have an option to change the major of this entire report okay so we can see we are firstly seeing by total application so let's say we want to see the total by total amount received okay so here you can see we have changed the major completely here and we can see the report now by a different major that is total amount received and you can see the titles of this particular chart are also dynamic so when i see i want to see for total funded amount you can see the total funded amount with respect to that the figures are changing the values are changing and we can you know see the chart with different angles similarly we have different loans also here like if you want to see for good loan if you want to see for bad loan so from here also we can see different uh, you know uh, slice and dicing of the data then we can see this particular by grade also if you want to see you can see by grade if you want to see by state by state also you can see all right so not only this filters we have also at applied some interactive filters so let's say uh, you want to see for um, the term loan for 36 months so when i click on 36 month you can see the, all the data are changing right so in this way if i want to see for the employee length who is working more than 10 years so when i click here the values will be changing and you will be getting the entire result with respect to that similarly for less than 1 year similarly if you want to see by purpose okay so the loan is been taken for credit card so you can see with respect to that we can see the data similarly if you want to see for mortgage so who, what is the home ownership of that particular fellow so if he is on mortgage if he is on rent okay with respect to that the values are changing getting so this will give us a different angles to look over to the data and the client will be seeing the data for different different filters different fields which we are having and with respect to that he might be taking some business decisions so we will see how to create this how to build the data and to make it more dynamic because we don't want static dashboard dashboard should be dynamic where we can see the data with different angles right so now we will jump to the next dashboard that is details so when i click on the details dashboard so it will take me to a grid view and in this grid view we are showing all the loan data okay so with respect to a different loan id uh, we can see different uh, angles or different datas for that particular fellow how much is uh, what is his purpose of taking the loan what is his home owner what is his grade his subgrade and in that we can find out when the loan was issued uh, 
then what is the amount funded to him from the bank what is his interest rate how much is the interest rate with the bank is giving the loan to that fellow then how much installment he is having monthly and with respect to that how much amount has been collected till date okay so with respect to that we can analyze and we can obviously add more fields if you want here i have just shown uh, eight to nine fields over here and you can see this is what how the you know uh, the grid view is performing where we can say details tab is performing and here obviously we can find out which are good loans okay and we can take a you know grid uh, and we can export it into excel if you want to see bad loans so bad loans are these are the total bad loans okay bad loans are nothing but we will see the terminology uh, it is nothing but the loan which is given and the people are not repaying the loan right in this way we will see the different functionalities all right so this is all about this particular end product which we will be designing and now what we will see uh, let's see what what we will be seeing in this complete entire video step by step so before moving ahead to our next part in this particular project i would like you to introduce you to my website so with request of many subscribers and many candidates they ask me to uh, connect one on one create your own resources to data analyst i have created this website where i offer different services to you so like interview preparation mock interviews career guidance in data analyst okay how to do your resume so no cre profiles if you want one on one mentorship and some digital materials are also available like power bi material okay so this is an entire material in which you also get some two projects also two entire projects is included in this which are not uploaded on youtube okay these are uh, apart or these are uh, different from youtube okay and the entire material from where you can learn all the topics of interviews dax data modeling all the theoretical notes are available over there so this is a uh, projects are also there you can see this is a power bi project this is a entire uh, we can say tableau project is available then we have data analyst complete material okay so if i show you the data analyst complete material it is a comprehensive material with all the tools you can see and what are the offerings what i will provide in this material it is also mentioned so each and everything for tableau to power bi uh, everything is mentioned in this particular material okay so you can also see and you know uh, if you are interested you can buy this and then i have also some sql materials as well and these are the feedbacks uh, you know which i received from the people who are purchasing you can also read everything and then and then you can make sure if you are interested you can go ahead and purchase so now let's move ahead to our next part of the video okay so uh, so this is a complete data analyst portfolio project and in the first part of this particular video we will see the ms sql server okay so we are not only going to connect our power bi to flat files but we will be connecting it to our ms sql server which we do in real time if you don't have ms sql server if you are using any other database like postgres or mysql not to worry you can import the data into that and then you can connect it to power bi if you don't have any server you can just connect it to flat file like you can directly connect to excel file or a csv file and you can start performing the dashboard okay you you don't have to you know uh, if you don't have the servers installed it is not that it will stop you from designing okay so first step which we will be seeing in ms sql server is we will import the data first okay then we will create a database okay with respect to that we will write some sql queries with respect to the problem statement which we are having we will generate the result we will store that result we will create a document and at last what we have to do is firing some sql queries with respect to the different business problem we will compare our results with all the dashboards which we are creating in power bi or in tableau or in excel and you can see this database queries can be worked in all other sql tools or sql databases just there are some few functions there are inbuilt functions it kind it might be some date functions which you have to change but all other some ansi standard functions or standard functions which you are going to use will work in other databases also okay then next we will be saying the second part in this project is the power bi part okay and where in power bi we will be connecting our power bi to ms sql server we will see how to connect it how to bring the data in ms sql from ms sql server to power bi and then we will build the report all right and then obviously i just showed you the dashboard which we are going to build so this is the first dashboard that is the summary which we will be building from start and this will be our second that is overview dashboard and the third one is the grid view we will be building from start to end okay 
and the most important thing next is the problem statement so for each and every dashboard we have a different problem statements and with respect to these problem statements we are going to solve our business problem so we have the first problem statement for our dashboard that is first dashboard is a summary dashboard and in this dashboard as i showed you we are going to analyze mostly the key performance indicators or we can say requirements for key performance indicators which gives us the overall summary of the business how it is performing at higher level all right and the first key performance indicator which uh, the client want us to analyze is the total loan applications okay so he want us to understand and find the total number of applications that are received during that particular period and in addition to the total loan applications he want us to identify how many are the month to date applications so in current month or in latest month how many applications have been received and to find out the month over month growth or we call that as mom that is nothing but by with respect to last month how many percentage of increase or decrease is there in the loan applications okay so this is the first kpi indicator second is the total funded amount the funded amount is nothing but how much amount of uh, the loan is given to that particular customer how much disbursement of that loan has been done to that customer okay and the same we have to find it for month to date as well as for month on month third one is total amount received total amount received is nothing but after funding the amount to that particular customer he have to pay or repay the back or repay the amount which he has been received back to the bank and we mostly do it by uh, you know uh, with respect to that interest rate he will be repaying that particular amount each monthly or we call it as emi with respect to installments each month he will be repaying that amount to the bank so we will also calculate how much is the total amount received back from that customer and we want it overall okay not for that customer but we will find it overall amount which has been received same for month to date and we will find month on month change for that then what is the average interest rate okay so overall what is the average interest rate that we are charging to our customers and what was the month on month and month uh, we can say month to date interest rate where that also we will be finding out then we have to find out debt to income ratio that is dti so this is a gauge or it is a measure from where uh, the bankers identifies that how is the customer's financial health okay so dti is nothing but we called it as a debt to income ratio and from borrowers or that customer's financial health is identified from here and the bank decides whether we should give the loan to that particular fellow or not by seeing the dti of that particular fellow the same we are being uh, you know uh, we will be creating a kpi for this particular kpi also or we can say major second in this same dashboard we are going to find out good loan and bad loans okay so good loans are those actually uh, which uh, the people who take the loans and they are repaying it uh, time to time or they are repaying uh, they have repaid completely fully they have played fully or they the account its current account that is the loan is ongoing and they are paying their installments correctly and bad loan are those bad loan those customers who have taken the loan but they are not paying their installments they have not paid the bank yet okay these are called as bad loan and with respect to that we will see how the good loan versus bad loans are performing and with respect to that we have to find out how many are the total bad loans or we can say total good loans their application percentage how much amount we have funded as a good loan how much amount we have received as uh, back from as a good loan that is same we are going to do for bad loan and at the third in this particular dashboard only we are going to find out the loan status grade view okay so in this grade view what we are finding out is with respect to loan status we are going to find out a chart of total funded amount total applications with respect to how what is the loan status okay and with respect to this problem statement i have created one more document here you can see in this i have in detailed mention uh, what is how what is the problem statement that we have received so i have not added everything in the uh, ppt but from here you can go ahead and you can learn this document or you can go through this document and then you will understand that what is the actual requirement for us so i will add this document in the description box you can download it is completely free not to worry about that okay so this is a problem statement 
of the first dashboard the second one we are going to go is through overview okay that is the second dashboard is overview dashboard in which we are going to deep dive in the data and we are going to find out for different charts how the or uh, we can see we have for different uh, data at different granularity we have to find out some uh, insights for our bank okay and in that we are going to design some different charts and the first chart which we are going to design is monthly trends by issue date okay so monthly trends by issue date we have to create a line chart and from this the customer will identify or the uh, stakeholders will get an insight of seasonality and long term trends in uh, lending activities lending is nothing but the bank which we are or the bank which is giving the loan to the customer we called it as lending the loan to that particular fellow okay so these terms are actually a banking terms not to worry much about that i will be adding a domain knowledge document in uh, the description or uh, i will provide you the domain knowledge document to use from where you will learn all the domain knowledge of the this particular project uh, so what are the different terms used how the bank disburses the loan what are the key measures they take in uh, account before giving the loan to that particular firm okay so not to worry about that all the terminologies and all the domain knowledge document i will provide it to you and you will learn everything from that the second which we are going to design in this is the regional analysis by state and here we are going to design a field map so with respect to different state how the activity is done then the third one is loan term analysis then here we are going to find out the donor chart so in this we are going to allow the client to understand how the distribution of loan is done across various loan lengths okay so at a loan length is nothing but the people are taking loan for 36 month or they are taking the loan for 60 months so with respect to that how is the trend of the loans okay then employee length analysis okay with respect to employee length is nothing but some people or employee who are working from last one year two year three year four year more than 10 years so with respect to their employee length in that organization or in that total career how much loan to, how much loan they are taking and how much loan bank is also giving to them so with respect to that they will understand that uh, with respect to that particular fellow uh, or we can say that particular fellow who is actually working how much amount of loan can be given to them right then the loan purpose so why we are taking the loan okay we have to provide a reason to the bank that uh, what is the purpose of taking the loan okay so and with respect to that purpose also we are going to design some bar charts and do some metric analysis then home ownership so that particular fellow who is taking the loan whether he is owning his own home or it is on mortgage or it is his uh, or he is rented in that particular home or he is a tenant in that home right so with respect to that we are going to analyze everything and for all these charts the metrics which we have to show is the loan application total loan applications total funded amount and the total amount received okay i mean to say that on all these three all all in these six charts whichever we are going to design the metrics to be shown are these three which are at the bottom of this particular ppt and i have already shown you how we are going to show we are going to design a parameter and with respect to that whenever we click all the values will be changing with respect to that particular metric okay so this was our second dashboard the third dashboard which we are going to design is a grid view or a detail tab and in this we are going to show a comprehensive detail dashboard which provide a consolidated view and from that uh, we can see you know we will take a snapshot of key uh, metrics and the data points of that particular customer and we can generate a report from that and we can provide it to a higher management okay so these are all the problem statements and i have just showed you the document from that document you will be learning uh, you know uh, what is the deep dive or we can say a comprehensive loan uh, problem statement which we have i have just mentioned a few points here but from there you will learn everything okay so you can go through the document for problem statement the next what are the functionalities you are going to learn in this complete project so we are going to use sql and we are going to use power bi so in front of your screen you can see these are few i am saying few functionalities which you will be learning at you am which are important but apart from this you will be also learning many more functionalities okay so i i didn't had space to add all of those and i didn't remember which i will be adding but more than this you will be learning so i request you to go through this complete video and i'm sure that you will be at the end of the video 
you will be very much uh, you will be taking so much of knowledge with you and so much of experience with you okay so these are the functionalities you can pause the screen and you can see what functionalities we are going to learn all right next what softwares we are going to use in this particular entire project the first we are going to use is ms office and in that we are going to use excel which the version which i am going to use is 2021 version the server version which i am going to use for ms sql server is 19.0 and also we are using a sql server management studio which is 19.0.20209.0 okay and the power bi version is the june 2023 version which was the latest version which was released uh, by power bi okay or you can use the old version also but in this latest version we have a new addition called kpi card and we are going to use or we are going to make use of that kpi card in this particular power bi video okay so whatever the new updates are coming with respect to that we are going to design our dashboard so you will be updated what new functionalities are coming in the market for power bi all right next and the most important thing guys i know you like my video and uh, you people enjoy i see your comments those are very positive comments which give me motivation to create such videos but most of you just watch the video and you do not subscribe so i request you to please subscribe the channel so it is free for you but it will give you uh, give me more motivation to create such, such videos and it will help me a lot and you people also it will help to reach out to more data enthusiasts okay so i request you to please like this video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends who are learning data analytics or who are in the uh, process of learning the data analytics all right so before starting with our first part that is with sql so i will give you a quick data walkthrough so this is the data which we are going to use for our analysis which is a financial loan data or we called it as a bank loan data also and here you can see the total rows which we are having is 38,000 almost uh, yeah 38,577 and the fields which we have in the rows are 24. So first we have is the ID then we have address state so ID is nothing but the loan ID of that particular fellow then we have address state so that particular individual is belonging from which particular state the application type whether he is an individual application or he is a joint particular fellow then the employee length uh, like he's working in an organization or he's in his career from how many years okay so for nine years ten years or ten plus years or three years then what is his title okay in that particular company what is his particular title title or what is he uh, you know uh, working as an okay that is a mkc accounting or a contractor or whatever it is then what is the grade it is like a b c d what is the grade of that particular loan then the home ownership so the, in that particular what is uh, he living in you know, he is living in a mortgage home or he is living in a rented home or there are some other home also like we can say uh, uh, let's see so i will just apply a filter over here so there are some other also like he is living on other or he's it is his own home or we don't have any information of his own home ownership right then when was the date issued for that particular loan okay that is issue date and then what was the last credit pool date then what was the last payment date which he have done then what is his loan status whether the loan has been fully paid or whether it is a current loan or it is being charged off okay so charge off loan is nothing but it is a bad loan because if you are charged off is nothing but you are not paying your installments correctly and you are not repaying your loan which you have taken from your bank fully paid is nothing but that the loan has been fully paid and uh, the third one is the current is nothing but the loan is in ongoing process but you are paying that loan installments regularly right then what is the next payment date so next payment date this is the next payment date right so you can see at the next payment date then we have a member id then we have a purpose of loan why the loan has been taken for purchasing car or for purchasing any other things right you can see car the debt consolidation or medical purpose or some another major purpose or business vacation wedding whatever it is then we have a subgrade then the terms so for how many months the loan has been taken 60 months or 36 months then the verification status of that fellow whether that particular is verified not verified or uh, we can say uh, source verified okay then what is his annual income uh, okay how much does he make monthly with respect to that uh, his dta has been it's uh, like debt to income ratio 
it it is been decided and with respect to that only his loan is being given then we have installments like how much installments he is paying monthly okay like we can see emi then what is his interest rate how much interest rate has been charged to that particular fellow for taking that loan okay then how much loan amount he have taken how much loan that is been given to that particular fellow okay we can say uh, you can see your the loan which is given is you know uh, like 35000 4500 dollars then we have total loan repayment like how much loan has been uh, you know uh, or how much amount has been repaid from that particular fellow and you can see if it's given four thousand five hundred dollars he's repaying four thousand nine hundred and eleven with respect to the interest rate which has been charged to him some people also pay some lump sum amount and close the loan so with respect to that how much the loan has been taken and how much the repayment has been done from that customer and from this the business actually the bank make the profits from the interest only so with respect to that we are going to see entire thing and the terminology or we can say how what is the actual uh, uh, we can see meaning of each and every uh, fields which we are using here we have created one more document for that that is the terminology that are field using data we can see what is the employee length what is the purpose of this uh, and what is the use of this for bank okay then the title why we are taking the title and what bank understand from that title okay so we can see home ownership the home ownership indicates the borrowing houses housing status what is is there and they use this field for collateral availability and borrower stability and homeowners may have lower default rates like the people who are actually owners of that home so it means that they have they are owning that house and the house they might have taken by taking some another loan and then they are repaying that loan so they mostly prefer to give home loan to or we can say loan to from the bank to homeowners right the same with respect to loan status next payment that you can learn everything from here why that field is been shown in that data and what is the purpose of that field to be present in that data and how the bank you know uh, utilize those data uh, for their knowledge okay so this is the terminologies which are used i will provide you this document not to worry about that also okay so these are some different terminologies and they have one more document which is called domain knowledge document okay so from here banking domain is something like uh, not all people have the knowledge of about this particular project or we can say domain so i have created a document you can read the document how the loans are given how the uh, bank uh, uh, process the loan how what measures they take before giving the loan to that particular fellow okay you can see process of granting the loan how the process is given or how the process is there for granting the loan then why the people or the reason uh, has been for analyzing the bank loan data why the bank is analyzing this data which has been provided to us okay with respect to that all are the things are present over here and with respect to that you can you know learn everything and you will acquire some domain knowledge so while we start actual analysis you will understand why we are analyzing this why what terms we are using what we can say terminologies we are using okay so i hope you are understanding so this is the complete about the data and the domain knowledge of this particular data so now we will start with our ms sql server so for that i will open my ms sql server so if you don't have ms sql server installed there are many videos available on youtube where you can search and you can see how to install the ms sql server and the ms sql server management studio as well okay so both are required so first you can just type here server management studio so you can see you will uh, get an ms sql server management studio i have just click on that so it will take some time to open and when it opens it will ask you some authentications you can see it is asking you a server name okay so this server name is automatically been taken so i have seen many people who are using the same server name which i have applied over here don't use the same server name this is the server name for my system okay you will uh, get your own server name when you install your uh, ms sql server in your own pc or in your own laptop or your own system so this is for me when i have installed you will get your own name when you install it okay so i will just click on connect so you the other options you have to keep as it is you don't have to apply any password or anything because this has been installed in local so whenever it is hosted by your client they will provide you the username and password but if it is present in your own local system you have installed it you don't have to provide any password you just have to click on connect so when you connect there are different uh, functionalities available here 
so you can see this is my server name and there are there are different folders available the first one is the database okay so when i click on this plus icon and when i expand this you can see there are different database which i have already created and which are available over here so what we have to do first is we will create a database first okay so now to create a database i will right click here and i will click on new database so as soon as i click here it is asking me what should be the name of the database so i will name as bank loan db okay so i will name it as bank loan database okay so you can name anything uh, you can either name a uh, loan database or bank database whatever you want okay so it is not compulsory that you should mention this name only then i will just click on okay okay so you can see the bank loan database has been created over here when i click on the plus there are different folders available over here also but now we have to import the data here you can see there are different tables available here but right now we don't have any tables there are just system tables which are auto created by creating this database but we have to you know import our external file into this particular database so how to do that so first i will click on this then i will right click here and i will create a new file okay so for that i will go in tasks okay right click go in task and you have an option called as import flat file okay so i will just click on this import flat file then i will just click on next and then here you have an option called browse okay so first i will browse my file from uh here so i will be using a csv file okay this csv file i will provide you you can download in the description box the link will be there and always remember it should be a csv file you cannot import the excel file into our sql server management okay so i will just click on this and then i will click on open right so then what this is the new table name so what should be the name of the table so i will name it as bank loan data so i will rename the name of our file which is a bank which should be new name which will be shown into our database the file will be the financial loan but the new name which will be importing or we will be adding into our database will be bank loan data and then i will click on next so it is saying that the name cannot be different so when we are trying to import the file into our ms sql server we are getting actually this error and this error is showing that please check if the if it is running by another application means what the file which we have or which we are trying to import here it is already opened in the excel we can we i will show you yeah so it is already opened here so i will just close this file i will first save and then i will close this file and i will click on ok and then we will try again so i will just click on next and now it has been importing here and here it is giving us some preview of 50 rows that in this type the file will be imported into our data okay or into our database so next i will just click on next and then we have got list of fields which are there into our uh, we can say csv file and the data type which uh, by default the sql have you know uh, managed to show us so here we will do some changes we will try to change some data types as per our requirement so first you can see id so as in our data always remember the id field which is there in our data is a primary key so each row will be having a unique key for that so i will just click it as a primary key and next you can see employee title it is allowing us null null means what in this employee title there are already some null values are present so don't worry about that that the data is not clean so there is an information or there are some information collected from bank that for few a few of the customers they don't know what is the employee title so it doesn't matter okay so what we will do wherever you see and where care 50 we are going to change to where care okay so wherever you you see and where care i will just drop it down and i will choose this as where care 50 so wherever you see it you have to change it so i will just do it quickly so for employee title also we will change it next here also we will change it and here as well so for a few more we have to change it again okay you can scroll down and for all of them we have changed to n where care so from n where care 50 you have changed it to where care 50 50 is nothing but the length of that particular field so how many text can be taken by that field so up to 50 text it can be taken okay now what we will do i will just click on next <laughs> and then i will click on finish okay so now it it is giving us error for inserting the data so let's see what is the error
so when you click here you are seeing that error is there in column 23 and it is for total payment and it is giving us an error that the type string for the data source cannot be converted to small integer okay means this is taking as a small int we have to convert it into something else okay because the value is too large to take it as a small integer okay that is for column 23 total payments so i will just go okay i will go back i will go back again and it is for total payment here so we will change this small int and we will take it as int only so for integer it will take maximum value for us okay so we will do this for loan amount also because loan amount also have big values so i will do it for loan amount also as int and and then i will just click on next then again i will click on finish so again it is giving us an error so invalid employee length okay so it is giving us invalid employee length uh column in value column line from bpc for call it five okay so uh so employee column length we have to increase for a few so i will just click on okay go back go back and so if we open our file here so let's open our file first so okay so this is our file and i will just increase the column size so here you can see there are a few employee titles that might be greater than 50 okay so what we will do for our employee title we will increase the size first okay, let's do that so for employee title let me increase it to 100 okay so i will just increase this to 100 okay similarly let's see if there are for any other also okay it looks good then i will just click on next finish still it is giving us an error so it has been opened in the another value so i will just save this so it is opened in another application it cannot be opened so i will just click on ok again i will go back again go back then i will just click on next and then i will click on finish okay so it should be not opened in background and we have to increase some of the length. so now you can see we have got an operation complete so many people receive this kind of errors and they message me in comments and all those things sometimes i am not able to answer the comments but you have to click on error and then you have to find and you have to read carefully each and every line what is the error which you are getting okay so with respect to that after reading 50 percent of your problem is solved so if sometimes if it is not solved you can reach out to me i will help you okay then i will just click on close okay so now here you cannot see any table which has been created so i will right click over here and i will click on refresh okay so after i click on refresh and i drop down this table so it is expanding and you can see the data has been added over here so let's see if the data is visible in our query or not for that i will right click here and i will select new query okay so once i do that a uh, new query window will be opened over here and here we will be writing our sql query so i will write query to retrieve all the data that is select star from the name of the table that is bank loan data okay this is our bank loan data and i will just run this query so as soon as i run this query you can see we have received 38576 rows the same rows which we have you know i have shown you in the raw data and all the fields which are there we are able to see here correct so these are the data so i will just open the data and i will again show you so how many data we actually have and how much is been received so here you can see 24 fields are there and if i see the total rows are there 38577 so it is calculating the header also so id is also one row which is been, it has been calculating so if you neglect that row it is how many 38576 okay so if i calculate from here only so you can see it is 38576 and the same number of rows are retrieved here that is 38576 okay so you have to cross check and you have to check if each and every field has been calculated or it has been present or it has been brought into our calculation or not okay so in this way we have imported our data the next next task for us is to you know uh, start firing the sql queries with respect to our uh, we can say problem statement okay so now i will take a new query to write on new line and and i will show you our problem statement first so let's go to our problem statement 
so you can see here this is our first problem statement and in that first problem statement we have to find out the key performance indicators and here it is asking us first to find out the total loan applications okay so now to find out the total loan applications the total loan applications how we can find it out so come to our sql and here we can find out the total loan application so we know that id here id field is a what we can see primary key and it is different for each and every row so number of applications is been drawn each row is an application okay so here each row is a customer application which gives an information of that customer who has applied for the loan and the bank has dispersed the loan for that set okay so we will find it out from id and for that we will write a query as select and here we have to take count so i will take select count of we have to calculate it for id so i will just type here id from from which data that is bank loan data okay and i will just select this entire statement and then i will run the query so as soon as i run the query you can see 38576 are the total number of applications that is nothing but total number of rows in our data and that is nothing but the total number of applications but at the top you can see no name the column or the output of this particular sql does not have any column name so i give it an alias over here so alias is nothing but a temporary name which we are giving for an hour output okay so i will give an as and it is nothing but total applications okay so these are what our total loan applications so i will just modify it as total loan applications and now i will select and you can see an execute button is there i will just run this now you can see the header has uh, received and uh, we can say uh, column name and these are the total loan applications now guys what you have to do is you have to save this query okay you have to save this query and you have to also save this result so how to save the result so i will show you the document which i have created so the query doc you can see here so this is a query doc and what we are doing here is for bank loan reports that is the first dashboard for kpis i have determined the total loan application so i will save the query over here and then i will save the result over here okay so what you have to do here is i will just show you sql so you have to take screenshot of this particular uh, we can say uh, the value or the results which you are getting so for that you have you can use a snipping tool okay we you have a snip tool in every system or if you want you can use any other tool which you have so take a new and just you just have to select this okay you just have to select this then if you open here the value has been selected you have to copy it from here and you have to paste it in your document okay so in this way you have to save your results and you can just select this control c and you can copy the query also and you can save it in your document so why to save this okay why we have why we are saving this particular query and why we are solving this first in sql so many people ask me that uh, sir why we are doing this why we are firing the sql queries and also we are showing it in our dashboards in our all power bi reports and again we are doing it in sql also so always remember whatever values which we are showing in our power bi or in our tableau or in our excel dashboards it is not compulsorily true that it is showing a correct value okay because the tableau and power bi is a garbage in and garbage out means whatever we are bringing into visualization it will show some value for that but how we will prove to our client that the values which are shown in those dashboards are correct or not so for that what we are doing with respect to the problem statement which we are having we are firing some sql queries and with respect to sql queries whatever result we are getting we are matching those result with our dashboard numbers whichever we are showing to our client if the numbers are matching correctly then and then we can say that the dashboard develop is in correct way or the developed dashboard can be given to a productions uh, we can say to our higher management to our client and it can be pushed to production servers otherwise if the qa or if the testing is not done we cannot push it ahead okay so that's the reason we have to check with our original data that which comes from our databases and to check it we have to fire some sql queries with respect to our problem statement which is given to us by our client so we have to save the results okay so first always remember we have to save the results in this way in the real time also we have to save the results because uh, let's say you are a developer today tomorrow a new developer is working on that project and he want to see what queries were used to fire 
what were the you know different function used to see whether that values were correct or not and this also second use is all what that you have to send this to your client also because whatever dashboard values you are showing those are matching here and this is the proof that those are matching and that's why they have sent you or you have sent this dashboard to your client for actual use and taking the business insights from there and taking the business decisions also from there because with respect to these reports only big decisions are taken and these big decisions should not be incorrect so that for that we have to cross check if you are showing the correct values or not okay i hope you are understanding why we are firing the sql queries here okay and why we are creating this type of document here all right so the document format might be different from company to company so i have shown you a simple format but always remember we have to create a document of testing whatever we are doing the unit testing of our dashboards all right and first we are doing this in sql and then we are creating it in power bi sometimes first we create the power bi dashboard and then we fire the sql queries to check if it is there or not so it depends from company to company and from client to client how they want it all right so this is for uh, total loan applications from bank loan data correct now we will see our next problem statement in that only he is asking us to find out the month to date okay so now how to find out the month to date so if we see into our data the data which we have i will show you in the excel sheet so i will show the excel sheet here i will just take it at top and i will apply some filters over here so whatever we are going to find out the month on month uh total application month to date total applications we are going to see it with respect to issue date issue date is means when when was that particular disbursement done for that particular failure means let's say that any fellow have or any customer have come to the bank and he is asking for some loan so issue date is nothing but on that particular date the loan has been disbursed to, or it has been given to that particular fellow so this is our issue date so on, on issue date only we are doing all the calculations we are keeping it as simple as possible you can do it for other dates also but at this project we are keeping it as simple as possible so if you see in the issue date we are seeing the data only for 2021 and that all for 12 months so the latest month which we are having in our data is december and that is also for year 2021 okay so what we will be doing is uh, we will be using the same trick so we have a december month over here so december is the last month so for december month only we have to find out the uh, sales so I, what i will do not sales the total loan applications so i will just copy this and i will paste this over here and now we have to find it for last month so i will check or i will add a filter condition where month okay where month of issue date because i told you we are going to find it for issue date is equal to 12 okay so what does this mean so we are finding out the total applications but we have applied a condition that the month of issue date should be 12 it should be for december but december name of that or we can say count of december month is 12 so we have found we have taken it as 12 and if there are multiple years okay let's say we have 2020 year 2021 year also then we have to add one more filter condition over here and okay and where month of issue date is equal to 12 and year of issue date okay year of issue date should be equal to what 2021 okay so this is the way we are solving this so when i run this you are getting an app uh, the total number of application that is 4314 that is for that month or we can say 12 month that is nothing but december month but it should be named as month to date so i will rename this as month to date loan application and when i run this we can see it is month to date total loan application is 4314 i have taken year of issue date as 2021 because if in our data there are multiple years are there and for multiple years there might be multiple december months but we have to find it for latest year whichever will be the latest year so if you are going in next year that is for 2022 you have to mention your 2022 we can also make it dynamic by you know uh, making the maximum value whichever the month is having so you can do that also in this query if you want to go advanced you can you know instead of hard coding the values over here you can go ahead and make it dynamic by taking the maximum month automatically okay in this query this can be modified over here 
all right so next thing what we have to do we have to find out month on month okay so always remember month on month is nothing but if you see our problem statement here we have to find out month on month sales so month on month is nothing but how your bank loan uh, disbursements are done with respect to last month and current month so let's say for last month the value is this much for this month the value is this much so find out the percentage increase or percentage decrease right so in this way we have to calculate it but we will only find out the last month that is previous month to date so i will just click here and i will click here as previous month to date alone applications so for previous month is nothing but now is december the latest month so last month will be what 11 that is nothing but november so when i run this query you will get the value as 4035 that is nothing but previous month to date application that is pmtd so if you know previous month if you know current month we can find out the month on month as what it is the formula which we have to calculate the month on month applications are that is nothing but m month to date loan applications minus previous month to date loan applications divided by previous month to date loan applications okay so this is the formula which we have to calculate so we are not going to find out month or month on month calculations for each and every we can find out that that query will be somewhat we can say tricky and i don't want you to get confused by using the large number of queries or complex queries so keep it as simple as possible you can do this uh you know manually also like finding we have month to date value we have pmtd and we have pmtd here also you just you can just calculate the uh, percentage over here so we will keep it as simple as possible for now okay so in this way we are going to find out just month to date and previous month to date all right and we have also found it out and we have completed our first kpi all right so next is what in this way only we will find it out for total funded amount okay so now this was for total loan applications now we will find it out total for funded amounts i will just close this for now and if you can see i have recorded here all the results so this is for month to date so you can see i have not changed the column name over here so this should be what month to date then our output will change over here so i will do that uh, when i send you the query document so you have to take the those snapshots only which i am using okay or which we are showing in your or i am showing in this particular video all right so now next what we have to do uh, go ahead is find out for the total funded amount so i will run our this query again to see the data so total funded amount is nothing but this is what you can see here the loan amount so loan amount is nothing but amount which is given to that particular customer that is nothing but the amount which is funded by our bank to that customer so we are going to use this particular column to find it out so we will make change in this query only i will just write here so we will be finding at sum of sum of loan amount so we have to take sum of loan amount okay we are not taking count we have to find out the sum of the total amount which has been dispersed that is nothing but total funded amount and we will name it as total funded amount from bank loan data so as soon as i run this query so you will get a value over here that is almost 435 million of uh, loan amount has been disbursed in that particular complete year okay and now so again we will record this result next we have to find it for month to date okay so to find out month to date again we will add a query over here that is we will add a filter that is for month okay so month of issue date okay on that particular date issue date is equal to 12 that is nothing but december and year should be what year of issue date should be equal to 2021 that is nothing but the latest year and when i select and run this query you can see 59.53.9 million that is nothing but 54 million amount was disbursed in this particular current year month that is nothing but the latest month and this is nothing but month to date so i will just name this alias of this uh output column as month to date and when i run you can see month to date total funded amount is 53.4 million okay or we can say 54 million next we have to find out for previous month to date so we will just modify this query only or i will just select this query control c and i will take a new query here and here we have to write out pmtd and here we have to just take 11 that is nothing for last month and when i run this particular query 
and when i execute the you can see it is what 47 or we can say it is 47.7 million okay so in this way we have found out month to date and previous month to date and from here you can find out the month on month total funded amount okay so in this way we have calculated for total funded amount okay if you are understanding one the next are same the query just we have to modify next we have to find out the total amount received so i will just delete this first and again i will run this query so the total received amount so we are which column we are going to use so you can see the total payment column so this total payment column is nothing but the payment which was which is received back from the customer in terms of different different installments monthly yearly and with respect to that it is nothing but the total amount received to the bank okay and from this only they do the profits okay so this is this amount is important so with respect to different interest rate the values are or the amount is taken back from the customer so let's calculate it so for that we will use select again select sum of what total payment so total payment that is nothing but amount which is received back to the pay bank from from bank loan data okay and this we will name an alias as total total what should it mention total amount received okay okay and then we will run this query and when i run this you can see 473 million amount has been received back from the customers okay so you can see in this query also i am saving everything okay so you can see the total uh, amount received is 473 09 c 3 so save the results whatever the query you are firing you have to save the results so that we can compare later with our dashboard so that whether we are getting the correct results or not okay and i have told you why we are doing this all right so now we have to find it for the current month that is for month to date so where here where here we'll write as a month of issue date month of issue date is equal to 12 and year of issue date should be equal to what 2021 because that is the date which we are having see for currently for our scenario this is not required but this i am telling you because if the data the data which we have in our uh, database if it is greater than or if it is having multiple years of data then we have to mention from which month we have to retrieve the data okay so which year we have to retrieve sorry so i will just select this and here you are getting the month to date so i will just mention as month to date as an output alias and here you can see 58 million amount has been received back in this current current month okay if you want to find out for previous month to date so i will just copy this query and you can run it again here and you just you have to mention your previous month to date and this should be 11 that is for november month and when i run this query it is 50 million so with respect to current month uh, or we can say previous month uh, the current month or we can say the latest month uh, amount received was greater okay that was uh, almost 58 million and in this only 50 million was there in november month so in this way we are taking then insights from this particular data and we are saving our results obviously okay now next what we have to find out is average interest rate okay so i will just close this everything and i will run this so when i execute this we have a column here called as interest rate so here you can see int underscore rate it is nothing but the interest rate so for that we have to find out average interest rate we don't have to take sum here so we will write select and here we are taking average okay so average interest rate so this is the name of field in our data same we have to type here that is int underscore rate and we will name it as average interest interest rate okay from bank loan data okay and when i run this you can see we are getting an average interest rate of 0 0.12 okay so now we have to convert it to percentage then here we have to multiply by 100 okay so if you are multiplying this by 100 we will be getting a perfect amount and now when i run this oops 
so now when i run this you can see we are getting a value as 12.04 the same value which we will be saving again we will be comparing so if you want up to two decimal points you can give here a round uh, we can see you can use a round function over here or a decimal functions so i will not go into that much okay so you can use a decimal function and you can show the result out up to two decimal points okay okay so if still you are i will give you an example on how to convert it into up to two decimal points so there are different functions available by which you can use you can use a, a decimal function you can use a format function or you can use a round function also so we will try it by using round function so round function takes two argument first is the value which we have to convert it into a rounded format and the second argument is up to how many digits you want it okay so first i will write, write a round function over here so first value is which value you have to convert so this is the value which we have to convert which we have already taken and second comma second value is up to how many uh, uh, we can say digits you want it so let's say you want two digits and i will close the bracket okay so this is for round function which we have closed the bracket when I, when I select this and when I run this, you can see we are only getting 12. That is only two digits. But we want more two digits after the decimal point. So I will mention here as 4. And now when I run this, you can see we are getting a value as 12.05. So in this way, you have to modify your query with respect to the requirement. And which is very much easy actually. Okay. So in this way, we have found it out for interest rate. And it is nothing but an average interest rate. So overall, okay, for all the data. So now we have to find it for month to date. Okay. So for current month, what is the average interest rate? So for that, here I will change it as first month to date underscore that is average, which is an alias, a temporary output name. And here we will write our filter condition that is where where we are going to limit the data here. That is for month of issue date. For month of issue date, it should be equal to 12 and year should be what year of issue date should be should be equal to 2021 okay and then i will select this and i will run this query so if you can see for month to date it is 12.36 so the interest rate has been increased to 12.36 for this current month so let's say if you want to find it for last month so if you want to find it for last month we have to mention your previous month to date and here we have to take it 11 and now when i run this query and if you can see it is 11.94 so out of overall average and with respect to current month also the last month's average interest has gone down okay so with respect to this this is an important insight for our bank also that in last month the total disbursements which were done for them the average interest rate was very much low okay and in next or in current month it was again high so so always remember the higher the average or higher the interest rate it is very much beneficial for the bank but it is not beneficial for the customer like us okay so the bank always make profit based on the what are the interest rate which we are giving to that particular customer all right so this is what uh, for average interest rate the next we have to find it for the debt to income ratio that is for dti and this is nothing but a DTI is nothing but based on this particular value only uh, the bankers or the people in the bank decide whether uh, we should give the loan to that customer or not. So actually they, they check the financial health of that particular customer. Okay. So now we will do or we will uh, write a complete query next. Okay. First I will just run this query and I will show you which column we are going to use. So you can see we have a value or called as DTI. So the same column which we are using going to use to select our or calculate our average. So I will just select. We want average here. Okay, average of DTI. Okay, very simple. And we are going to multiply it again by hundred because here you can see it is the points are in decimals, and we want as average DTI. Okay, we will name it as average DTI from bank loan data okay and when i run this again you can see 13.32 so if you want again for two decimal numbers only then you can round this and to four okay this in this way you are rounded this and you can when i run this again you can see 13.33 is the value and if you find to want to find out it for only current month then we are going to apply some filter condition where month of issue date month of issue date is equal to 12 and year 
of issue date is equal to 2021 all right and this is nothing but month to date average date or sorry month to date average dti and now we will run this and you can see for this current month it is 13.67 okay and next if i run again so it is considered that higher is the dti it is good for that particular customer okay so then we will go ahead and see again uh for previous month okay so i will just see from previous month it is nothing but we have to take here 11 and when i run this you can see it is 13.3 all right so in this way we have to calculate our values so for current month previous month and overall so in this way we have completed our dashboard that is key performance indicator that is at the top which we are going to show okay so one thing important over here i i told you that the dti should be uh if it is higher then it is good so actually that is incorrect so i want to correct my statement over here that the dti should be not very much high also and it should not be very much low also if it is very much high then you are not able to manage your payments and all those things and if it is very much low means that you are not able to you know uh, work on your finances and all those things so it is considered that 30 to 35 or 36 percent depending upon each and every bank 30 to 35 or 20 25 so this range is considered as a better dti okay so uh, it is it should be not too high or it should not too low so with respect to banking domain knowledge which i have gained i am telling you this particular information so i hope you are understanding that okay, so now next in our same dashboard we have good loan versus bad loan kpis and in that for good loan we have to find out the good loan application percentage and in the bad loan we have to find out the bad loan application percentage and with respect to that some other more kpis we have to find out over here so to do that what we have to do actually over here is so i will just show you uh, what is actually what is meant by good loan and what is meant by bad loan so i will just delete this first okay and then i will execute this so we have a field called over here called as a loan status so just let me find out that field which is there where it is okay you can see here we have a loan status over here so uh just select i will just open this particular as select loan status okay from bank loan data okay and i will run this okay so you can see there are different loan status available that is fully paid is there charged off is there then we have uh there may be one more so if you can see there is current is also there so totally if there are three loan status which we have if you see in excel sheet also i will show you there are different loan status which we have are three that is charged off current and fully paid so out of all these loan status these are uh, the good loan and bad loan are decided on the loan status only so the good loan are those loans uh, whose loan status is current and fully paid okay so why we say this as good loan fully paid means what whatever the loan which is taken by that particular customer from that particular bank he have fully paid that loan with respect to whatever installations or whatever whatever the lump sum amount he's paying <laughs> so he have fully paid his loan amount so it falls under fully paid and fully paid loan and it is which is good for uh, bank right so that's the reason it, it has been categorized in good loan second one is current current is nothing but that the people are who, who have taken the loan and currently they are repaying their loan uh, with respect to whatever tenure they have taken and with respect to whatever monthly installment they have so regularly they are paying the loan and they are repaying their particular loan to their particular bank so that is also good so that also falls under good loan and the third category is charged off so now charged off is something that those customers who have taken the loan but who are not repaying their particular installments who are not paying the loan there are defaulters who are which are there on on those particular peoples and they are not giving the money bank to the or uh, to the bank again okay so what what happens is these are bad loans okay so the the bad loans are not good for bank they are reducing their profits okay their money is been okay in with, with customers and they are not repaying it back that's why we have decided it into two good loan and bad loan so in good loan there are two categories or two loan status that is current and fully paid and for bad loan it is charged so i hope you have understood and with respect to that only now we are going to find out the 
uh, good loan and bank bad loan percentages so for good loan what we will do first we have to find out the uh, first what we are going to find out is uh, total number of application percentage how many total number of percentage of applications are been received for bad loan and good loan both so for good loan we will write a query for our percentage as i will write it as select so i will write a query and then i will explain you the query so i will write select and then i will uh, take on next line as count so we have to find out the count of the applications with respect to fully paid and current divided by the total applications which has been received so count so we have to take uh, you know in account so i will first take a bracket over here one more and here we will take uh, we have to consider only two loan status which i have just explained you and for that i will write a case statement so case when okay so when loan status okay so when loan status if it is equal to fully paid okay if it is equal to fully paid and make sure you are writing this currently because this is case sensitive so if it is fully paid or the loan status is equal to i will just copy this again if loan status is equal to current okay so if our loan status fall in this back bracket then what we have to take then we will take id okay then we will take id that is nothing but the id from our data and we will end this okay then i will close this bracket and then i will close the bracket for count okay and we have to divide this by total count okay that is nothing but count of id okay and this should be named as what or we will name this particular output as good loan percentage okay and we want to be retrieved from bank loan data okay and now when i run this particular query you can see we are getting here zero okay so first uh, we will just solve this why we are getting here zero because we are finding out the percentages over here so we have to multiply this total statement total division value we have to multiply it by 100 okay and 100 100 is multiplied at numerator so this is our numerator this is our denominator so we will multiply our count by 100 over here so i will multiply it by 100 over here and now when i run this query you can see 86 percentage so we are getting an value that is 86 percentage of good loan has been dispersed okay so in this way we are finding out the values okay so this is how this works is count of case case is nothing but a case statement when we are grouping any two values so here we are grouping what loan status is equal to fully paid and loan status is equal to current and then we have to end this and we are dividing it by total number of count and this is nothing but a good loan percentage and we are taking it from bank data and when we run this entire query we are getting the percentage as 86 percent okay so in this way you have to find out the query all right so i hope you have understood the next with respect to our problem statement is we have to find out the good loan applications so this is very simple so i will just delete this so we have to find out how many are the good loan applications so good loan application is nothing but count of id we have to take okay count of id from where we have to take we have to take it from bank loan data okay so now this will give us the total count of applications but we want only for good loan that is for fully paid loan status and the current loan status so we will apply and filter over here for loan status okay so for where loan status is equal to what fully paid <coughs> or the loan status is equal to what or the loan status is equal to current okay and now when i run this query you can see 33243 almost uh, more than 86 percent right which we, we calculated just the percentage value so many applications are for good loan okay so which is a good thing so from here we will give an alias here as good good loan good loan applications okay and when i run this query you can see the good loan applications are 33243 so we have to save this okay so always remember to save this that is 33243 we have to save the values which we are okay firing with respect to our data okay 
whatever the query result we have we are getting because we have to compare it later with our power bi dashboards also right so we have saved this as 33243 now next we have to find out the good loan funded amount with respect to our next <coughs> next uh, whatever statement we are having or the problem statement is good loan funded amount so uh, we will modify the same query because we want this to be you know instead of writing this big also you can just write loan status in function you can use in fully paid comma current so there are multiple ways to write whichever is convenient for you and simpler for you you can write that okay so now we have to find out the uh, funded amount so funded amount is nothing but we have to take sum of we, have, we already know no, what is the funded amount that is nothing but loan amount okay so this is the loan amount and this is nothing but good instead of good loan application it is good it should be good loan funded amount good loan funded amount okay and when i run this particular query you can see this is the good loan funded amount so and we have to save the query results over here okay so this is a good loan funded amount value okay next with respect to our problem statement we have to find out good loan total received amount okay so total amount received is nothing but it is nothing but total payment sum of total payment okay so sum of total payment as good loan total payment received or received amount and now when i run this query you can see we are getting for against good loan we are getting 435 million received amount okay so if i am saved i have saved a result so you can see funded amount was 370 million and we are getting back how much 435 million that means what bank is making profit from this good loan so they have invested 370 million in the giving the loans and all those things and in return they are getting 435 million which is huge amount if you take the difference in between and whatever difference value you are getting that is nothing but profit which the bank loan have made all right so the good loans are always good for the bank now we have to go ahead and find out for bad loans and for bad loans the loan status is what charged off okay so with respect to first we have to find out the total percentage of bad loan okay and in this case we will be finding it for uh, only if uh, the same case statement we are going to use so we i will already i already have the query over here i will just run this i will not write it again okay so now what we are going to take is for bad loan we have to take count when the uh, what we can say loan status is charged off okay and then we have multiplied it by 100 and we have taken the count of id we are dividing it by count of id from bank loan so when i just run this query you can see we are getting as 13.82 as a value okay if you want to round it you can use a round function over here okay so not to worry on that also so in this way we are finding out the uh, what we can say total bank bad loan percentage so bad loan for the loan status is charged off which is not good for bank's help okay so in this way we have found out and next again you have to save the query over here all right next we have to find out the total amount which has been funded or which we have to find out first total applications of bad loan okay so for that what i will do quickly i will write a query over here select count of id from <coughs> bank loan data and this is nothing but we will name an alias as bank bad loan applications okay and here where loan status should be what is equal to charged off right and now we will run this query particularly okay so you are getting in mashes as as okay so here the form should be over here okay and now when i run this query you can see 5000 or we can say almost 5300 applications are there which are bad loan applications so in this particular year the bank has given loan to 5000 more than 5000 people who are which is not good for bank okay next what we have to find out is uh, we have to find out the bad loan funded amount how much loan the bank has given as an bad loan so we will change this to sum of loan amount okay so 
so we'll take it as sum of loan amount this is nothing but bad loan funded amount okay and when i run this particular query you can see 65 million amount has been given as a bad loan okay and now this is a funded amount so how much bank have received again so we will see out of 65 how much it has been received again so for that we will name it as amount received okay and from here instead of loan amount we will type here as total payment okay and now when i run this query you can see 37 million only okay so out of 65 million you can see only 37 million of amount has been received back so this is very bad for bank sale they are not making your profit they are losing their money over here right so that's the reason these types of loans are called as bad loan because the customers are not paying back their money or they are not paying their installments or whatever things to the bank again after taking the loan so these are called as bad loan applications okay so this is something which banks should have had. and this is a huge amount which should be taken care by banks after or they should increase their measures of giving the applications okay they should do an investigation of that particular customer whether we should give him loan or not so that's the reason many times a bank sees credits reports right civil scores and all those things okay and with respect to that only they will give you the loan if the civil score is correct then they will understand that this fellow will be able to give our money back with respect to different installments okay so this is the bad loan applications okay so now next what we have to find out is we have to find out our uh, loan status grade view okay so this is very simple for loan status grade view uh, we have we want different measures to be analyzed over here so in respect to that uh, we will see what measures first we will analyze first we have to analyze loan status loan count total amount received funded loan so for that what i will do i will just copy this query and I will paste it over here and I will explain you uh, what the what is written in this particular query. So with respect to the loan status, instead of looking at good loan and bad loan, for all the loan status, how the bank is performing. So first we have to find out the total loan amount that is nothing but total application. So we will name it as total applications. Okay, and it is nothing but total loan applications. Okay, so with respect to that loan status, how many are the low total loan applications that is nothing but count of ID? How much are the total amount received that is nothing but total payment how much is the funded amount that is total amount what is the interest rate that is interest rate multiply 100 to convert it into percentage dti and where we are taking it from bank loan and we are grouping it by uh, loan status because whatever uh, we are taking over here that is whatever aggregations we are taking with respect to any dimension field we have to always group it by okay that is nothing but we are taking a groups of that and then we are aggregating that so this is the compulsory field which we have to add over here if we are using any dimension field in retrieving the data from our database so when i run this query you can see we are getting with respect to fully paid fully paid applications are 32000 current means only almost 1100 applications are there who are yet uh, still paying their loan but they are paying their loan and they are paying their installments correctly okay means they are not doing the things like they have you know they are not paying the installments but charged off is something the bank should worry about okay so these two are very good you can see the performance is also good and they are gaining profits from here but they are losing money here right so with respect to that we have to find out the month to date and previous month to dates also so like month to date how much amount is received and on the last month to date how much amount has been received okay uh, not last month to date month to date amount received and month to date amount funded so for that we have written this query so if i if i show you so this is the query which we are writing over here and this is nothing but we are taking the loan status and sum of amount that is nothing but sum of total payment which has been received and we will name it as total month to date and total month to date funded amount and just we are writing a where condition over here that we want it only for month of well that is nothing for month of december which is the last month in our data and when we run this query so it will give us for current month okay so how the uh, loan is received how much amount is received back for current month and how much it was funded so with respect to that it can be seen for fully paid current at charge down all right so i have not exp uh, written this query because it will take some more time to write and type the query so i've just copied this and i have explained you 
uh, like what we are showing here and it is not very much hard it's just a normal retrieving of the columns and with respect to that we are writing some good syntaxes over here okay so the prerequisite we uh, should know for learning the power bi projects and all the other projects is you should know sql and most of the work is done on sql because almost 30 to 35 percent of weightage is taken by sql in data analyst portfolio projects all right so this is what uh, we have done for our first dashboard okay so this is where the problem statement our for our first dashboard that is nothing but a summary dashboard we also called it as a kps dashboard because all the summary we have mentioning there at or we can say at higher level how the business is performing all right so now next what we have to do is we have to find it for the second dashboard that is overview dashboard so we will move ahead to build our queries for the second dashboard that is overview dashboard and in this we have to uh, you know do some charts or for the charts we are going to build some queries so these charts are actually to be built in dashboards but with respect to our query we will just get all the data in the grid view okay so first we have to find out the monthly trends by issue date okay so by issue date what are the monthly trends and for all these particular charts we have to you know analyze this matrix you can see at the bottom these metrics are to be analyzed that is how many are the total loan applications for monthly trained funded amount and the total amount received okay so now we will uh, take our sql query and i will just we will write a query over here so first i will just delete this and then i will run this query to see our entire table okay so just increase this and now here you can see uh, this is our table and now with respect to the select or we can say issue date we have to find out the monthly print so i will just write a query over here first and then i'll explain you so select okay so now we have to build take here different columns so first we have to uh, know the month of that particular date okay so to retrieve the month the name of that particular uh, we can say date we have to use a function called date name okay so i will use a date name function and the first argument which it takes is interval so interval is nothing but we have to find it for month okay so i will write here month comma and which is the date for which date so it will be for issue date okay issue date i will close this bracket comma then what we want we want count that is total application that is nothing but count of id because count of id is what total application we will name it as total loan applications okay then we want to find out the second metric is what total funded amount okay so funded amount is nothing but sum of loan amount and we name it as total funded amount okay then we want to find out the total amount received okay so that is nothing but sum of payment or we can say total payment right these are the things which we want to bring and we want to bring it or retrieve it from the bank loan data okay and we have we have to retrieve it from bank loan data and always remember whenever we are taking any dimension and when we are calculating it with respect to some aggregation we have to take the group by so i will just take this and i will group it by okay and we will group it by with this particular text and next okay i'll just reduce this and i will order it by same let's see control e. okay and when i run this particular query so you can see we have an error over here so we have to apply the comma over here okay and now i will run this so you can see we have uh, received with respect to each month what are the different loan application total funded amount and total amount received so here we will name an alias because we don't have the column name so we will name it as month name okay and when i run this now again you will get a month name over here but when you see at this month names we cannot see it with respect to january so the january is the first month so with respect to serially january to december we are not able to see so what we have to do is we are, we are using order by function here but order by is only ascending by default if you are not writing anything here it is ascending and if you write here descending 
so when, when i execute this query it is giving us with respect to alphabetical order okay we don't want that we want with respect to month or we can say number of month so for that what we will do we will add one more column over here and i will name it as month of issue date okay so what this particular will do us this particular will give us an output as the number of that particular month okay and what i will do i will just remove this instead of date name we will order it by month date okay. and we have to also group it by this particular thing that is control c and we will paste it over here and we will add one more amount here because whatever dimensions we are using we have to group it by those dimensions and i will just select this and i will run this and now you can see i will just give the name of the alias as month number okay and i will run this so once i run this you can see we are getting from january february in serial because it is sorting or it is giving us with respect to month number and from here we can take an insight of each month how the total loan applications are there what is the funded amount and what is the total amount received okay and this result we are going to compare with with our dashboard so whatever we are going to show on dashboard we are going to compare our result and we are going to see if we on the dashboard also we are going to see the same values or not and if they are same that we can go ahead and uh, you know show that dashboard to our client if it is not showing the same values then we will come to know that yeah there is something wrong in our dashboard and we have to build it correctly okay and in the same we have to create a document okay so save this query and create a document so that all the results are saved so that you can again compare it with your uh, dashboard all right so this is for uh, this statement that is monthly trend the second we have to find out is the regional analysis by state okay so for that i will again run this entire query to see uh, what is the state so you have a state uh, abbreviations are only there that is address state okay so again we have to uh, you know uh, work on this same measures only so we'll just modify this query so i will just remove this because we want don't want with respect to date but we want it with respect to address state so that is nothing but address state okay and i will copy this so we'll i will just modify this query only Comp copy this and instead of grouping by this we will group it by address state and we'll also order it by address state now when i run this query you can see with respect to address state we are we are going to or we are seeing here the applications okay and if you want to let's say you want to see uh, what is the total funded amount maximum total funded amount for which particular state we are giving so you can just copy this sum of uh, loan amount and you can add it over here and we will name it as in descending order and i will run this query and you can see for the total funded amount this is maximum that is 78 million is given to california okay with respect to that if you want to see the total loan application maximum so you have to just take this total loan application that is count of id and you have to put it over here and when i run this query you can see california is only the state which has uh, the total loan application as maximum second is new york then fl texas okay so all these states are there so with respect to that if you want to sort your columns you can sort and you can take the insights from here again you have to save this query all right so this is your second the third one we have to find out is with respect to term analysis okay so loan term and we have to analyze it in a loaner chart but here if i run this query again you can see the term is nothing but we have a field over here called as term so that is 36 60 months and all those things so we will again you know make modifications in this query only because the measures are same the same matrix we have to measure just with respect to different dimensions so term okay so we want to analyze with the term and we have to group it by term control v and order by also i will add it by term itself and i will remove the descending and i will run this query so you can see for 36 months this is the total loan application for 60 it is this the funded amount for 36 months the funded or the total received again back amount for the 36 months so in this way we are analyzing with respect to different months or here or for different terms okay so this was your third the second with it with, with respect to employee length okay so when i run this again and you can see the employee length is nothing but this column okay so the name is what employee length that is emp underscore length <laughs> sorry okay and i will just copy this 
Control C and I will press tutorial. Okay, and now I will run this query. So as soon as you run this query, you can see the total number of uh, employee, the different employees. So less than one year, one year, 10 plus years, two years, three years, four years. So with respect to all these, uh, these are nothing but these, uh, these are the employees or these are the customers of that bank who are working as an employee and who are working as an employee in, in their professional experience who are having experience more than three years, four years. And with respect to their working experience or working organizational experience, uh, the bank is deciding to give them applications or not. So with respect to that, they have decided. And with respect to that, the total applications which are been received for each and every employee length, it has been seen over here. Okay. So if you want to see uh, which for which particular employee length, the total applications are given. So we can see we are taken. We'll just control C here and we'll paste it over here. And we will see it in the descending order. So when I run this query, you can see for 10 plus years, 8,000 more than uh, 8,000 applications are given. Similarly, second one is uh, less than one year, then two year, three year, four year, then again one year, right? So in this way, they are funding their amount or they are giving uh, the loans to the people with respect to their employee loan. All right. Then we have to find out with respect to purpose for what purpose they are buying that uh, employee or that particular loan. Okay. So I will run again this query over here. Okay. And the purpose, you can see this is the purpose column which we have. So that is nothing but we are going to write here purpose. Okay. And I will just copy this and here I will paste it. And when I run this query, you can see uh, with respect to, and we have also uh, sorted it with count of ID in descending order. So debt consideration is nothing but this is the purpose why they have bought the loan and there are 18,000 applications are there for that particular loan. Second is credit card. Some of them have taken for improvement of their home. Some of them are taking for business, car loan, wedding loan, for medical, for moving, house loans are there. Some vacation purpose, educational purpose, renewable energy. So there are different purpose why the people are buying the loans and with respect to that, which is the maximum purpose or which how many loan applications are maximum given for which kind of purpose okay and with respect to that what is the total funded amount for that particular purpose and how much is the amount received back from that particular purpose okay so in this way bank analyze all these particular things over here all right then next we have to find out with respect to home ownership so i will run again this and we have a home ownership over here so for that i will write a home ownership over here <laughs> sorry okay so home ownership okay and i will copy this and we have to group it by again by home ownership and when i run this query you can see with respect to home ownership for rent home ownership means the people who are living on rent they are buying the maximum loan applications then the people who who are uh, you know uh, living as a mortgage okay they are using this type uh, they have taken this amount of applications okay so with respect to this uh, we can you know analyze the things also all right so with respect to home ownership how the uh, customers are taking the loans how the bank is giving them the loan and you can slice and dice the data with respect to different measures over here all right so in this way we have uh, you know shown all the metrics for the second dashboard we have analyzed everything and the for last one this is the grid view okay so grid view is nothing but if i run this query this is nothing but the entire grid view all right so you you don't have to you know uh, go inside and you know uh, you fire some sql queries for grid view it is nothing but a grid view where we are going to export it into sql format so it is not required to do this so this was all about the sql part okay so you will say you will be saying that we have applied different uh, uh, filters on our dashboard with respect to the filtering if i if i see for execute this and if you can see this is the offer all the days okay but we have applied some filters on our data so let's say i have applied a filter called grade okay and i want to see for a grade so what i will do i will add a where condition over here where grade okay where grade is equal to what a so i want to see for a grade okay so for a grade uh, how many are the home ownership uh, applications so where I run these queries, you can see there are different values available. 
same in uh, our dashboard also we are going to apply some filters if i show you my dashboard here so you can see and if i go into or you second dashboard so i have applied different filters over here like for good loan bad loan with respect to grade with respect to state okay the same you can apply the different applications over here so for grade also if you want to see for alaska okay so if you want to see for address state as is equal to if i see it for uh, if you want to see for california that is nothing but ca and when i run this application so these are the total applications for ca when for grade a and for state ca okay so in this way you can you know apply different filters and you can find the results okay so this is the way you should fire the sql queries we have just taken the overall but you should apply some different filters and with respect to that you you should check the data whether it is working or not okay so filters are also very much important so this was all about sql now we will go ahead and see how to do the things in power bi how to build the dashboard in power bi and then we will validate our results with what we have got in our sql queries because we have already created this document so this document you have to create you have to store all the results over here so that you can cross check with your power bi dashboards right so in this way we have seen our sql part